My name is Michael Lucy. I'm a systems engineer at RethinkDB. And like Christina said, I'm going to talk a little bit about the 116 release. So RethinkDB, for those of you who don't know, is an open source JSON database that I and uh, quite a few other people in the room tonight have poured a lot of love into over the years. And we have a new release coming out in just two or three days. So there are two really, real co really, really cool things in this release. Uh, the first one is that we've do done a lot of work on the operations side on making administrating the thing easier. So RethinkDB has always been pretty easy to administrate if you have a small cluster and a small team working on it. But uh, as the project's gotten bigger and you know, larger teams have started to use us, we heard a lot of feedback that it was kind of hard to manipulate the cluster programmatically. So in this release, we've added a whole bunch of cool new features for making RethinkDB really, really easy to administer with a large cluster and a large team. And the most important of those probably is that you can now configure it using the query language. So you can programmatically reshard and move things around and change the durability on your tables and all the things like that. So that's the first cool feature. And the second cool feature in the release that's coming up, which I'm going to talk about a little bit more today, is that we've really, really, really extended the range of change feeds. And you can now call them on a lot of queries rather than just on tables. So that probably requires a little bit of explanation, especially for those of you who aren't even familiar with what change feeds used to do, let alone what they're going to do in the new release. So I'm going to cover that a little bit really quickly. So a long while ago, about six months ago, we had a feature called change feeds which does about what you'd expect. It lets you subscribe to all the changes on a table. Here I've written a query that subscribes to the changes on the data table. And then whenever something happens on that table, you get notified about it in your app. So if this is your app and this is RethinkDB, you, just, you send this query once and you're subscribed to changes on the table. And then when things happen, even if they happen later, you get updates saying what changed. So something could happen right after you open changes. Something could happen you know, five minutes after you subscribe. Something could happen the day after you subscribe. As long as the connection is open, you still get notified about it. So you don't need to, you don't need to poll for these things. You just subscribe once, and then RethinkDB pushes them out to you. All right, so that's what we added six months ago. And the question you're probably asking is, all right, that's kind of cool. What, what have you got for me now? What did you do in the last six months? What's new that's interesting? So one of the really cool things that happened when we released that feature is that uh, people used it in a lot of ways we didn't expect. We sort of expected change feeds to be a thing that people would use to integrate RethinkDB with other services. They might be running like Elasticsearch and sort of push all their data and all the updates to the data into that so they could use it. But when we released the thing, we found out that in addition to that, people were using it to uh, add real-time features to their apps and that this mattered a lot to them and they've been having trouble doing it and change feeds made it a little bit easier for them. And from talking to these people, we sort of, we really got to get a sense that uh, things were changing a little bit, that people wanted to interact with databases in a way they didn't want to interact with them even five or 10 years ago. Because you know, five, or five or 10 years ago, you could make a web app that was really just a bunch of pages and hyperlinks and you had to click a link for anything to happen and reload the page to see new data and people were happy with that because you know, they hadn't even seen that before. But uh, now that really sort of doesn't cut it anymore. People, people want things to be updating live. They want collaborative apps where they can be on there with their friends and see what's happening. They want you know, analytics software that's showing them things as it happens rather than showing them a bunch of sort of static snapshots of what's going on. And these, sort of, these things are actually really hard to write with uh, traditional ways of accessing databases. So to summarize that really quickly, there are these things called real-time apps. Users, especially uh, web users, really want them, but they're a huge pain in the ass to write. And when we released 1.13 and put out the first change feeds feature, we discovered that they were such a pain to write that even this thing we hadn't intended for that purpose, people were latching onto it as a way to help them get this done. All right. So those of you who have tried to write something like a real-time app in the past probably understand on a visceral level why they're a pain in the ass to write because, you know, you lift it. But for those of you that haven't, I'm going to give you a, a quick overview with a pretty simple example of why it's hard and what we make easier in the new release. So the example I'm going to give is super simple. It's just going to be a leaderboard. So, you know, you have some sort of game. You want to show a list of the top 1,000 players and their scores. 
Now, if you wanted to write a just normal non-real-time version of this, it would be incredibly easy. In fact, I can do it right here in a three-line query. You just write this query, take the table players, order by the score in descending order, and then take the first 1,000 elements, and then display that on the page, you're done, close the connection, task complete. Now, let's say instead of just displaying that statically, you wanted this thing to update live so that you know, if new people are entering the top 1,000, you'll update this on pe in people's web browsers and show them what's happening. So uh, think about this to yourself for a second. What's, what's the first thing you would try if you had to do this, if you had to make this list of 1,000 things update? The first thing most people would try, which is a pretty reasonable first try, would be polling. So the way polling would work is your app would get the first, thou get the first 1,000 users, display it, wait you know, a tenth of a second, and then go out and get it again and display the new set of 1,000 users and wait a tenth of a second and just do this in a loop. So this has the advantage that it's really, really easy. You just take the query you've already written, put in a while loop, put a sleep in there, and display it. But it has the downside that you're pulling 1,000 rows of your database over the network every tenth of a second for every page that someone has open. So this is incredibly slow and very quickly stops working. So I know what you're probably thinking. I would never do it that way. What I would do instead is I would put a server in the middle and I would have that middleware server pull the database, get the updated set of 1,000, calculate some sort of fancy diff, and push that diff out to my app so that they have you know, as little data as necessarily going over to the network to them. And this works. This is like a reasonable design that you could make a workable thing with. But it still has a couple of problems. So ooh, Unicode error on my bullet points. So one of those is that it's still pretty slow. Uh, your middleware server is still polling the database. And regardless of how often this list of the top 1,000 things is updating, you're still getting all 1,000 things sent over the network every tenth of a second. And that's OK, but as you start adding more real-time components to your app, you're going to be streaming huge amounts of data over the network for each and every one of them. So that's the first problem. The second problem is that it requires development effort. You have to write the code on this server. You have to get these 1,000 elements, calculate the diff, figure out where you need to push it to, send it there, like you know, deal with drop messages, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and the third problem is that you've introduced a new point of failure. There could be a hardware failure on your middleware server. There could, you know, any number of things could go wrong, and it's another way things can fall over. All right, so can we do even better than this? The answer is yes, kind of. So the natural third thing people try if this approach doesn't work for them is they try and make things smarter on the machine that's changing the data. So whatever machine that's updating your database and causing the top 1,000 list to change, you make it smart enough to notify your applications, telling them what it's changed. So you know, if it updates Alice's score to 9,002 instead of 9,001, it knows everyone displaying the high score list and just writes them and says, you know, increase this number. So this works. This has no real scalability problems, but it is uh, really, really complex. So the first reason that it's really complex is that the server doing these writes, basically every server that could potentially modify any aspect of any of the things people are subscribed to has to know enough to know whether it's done that, and if so, who it needs to let know about it. And the second problem is that in this particular case, sometimes just notifying the other applications isn't enough. Let's say instead of updating Alice's score, you decide she's been disqualified and you delete her from the list. Your applications can't display the new list of 1,000 without reading the 1,000 first person out of the database. So they actually have to be communicating with the database too. And now you get into all sorts of nasty coordination problems, where like they're doing this read while other writes are going on and notifications are backing up and they have to maintain a consistent view of the data. And it's, it's just a mess. Like You can do it, but it's a lot of work. All right. So. All three of those solutions are not very good and not something anyone would like to spend their time on if they can help it. You basically, you can, either, you can either do something simple that doesn't scale or you can do something complicated and bang your head against the wall for a long time. So the, the thing we've added to 1.16, now that you understand the problem space a little better to make this easier, is in addition to being able to call changes on a table and get everything that happens on that table, 
we now let you call changes on individual queries. So you can write a query, call changes on the end, and when the result of that query changes, we let you know. So let's go back, all the way back, to when we wrote the simple non-real-time version of this scoreboard app. We just wrote the simple three-line query. So to use change feeds to, change, uh, change feeds to turn this into a real-time app, you literally just add a fourth line. That's all the development effort you have to do. Then you subscribe to the changes on this query, and your app notifies RethinkDB that it wants to subscribe to these changes. And whenever the top thousand list changes, RethinkDB just lets you know it's different. It takes care of you know all the things like reading a new entry off of disk if you delete one of them, coordinating multiple writes coming in at the same time, things like that. And this way of doing it, it basically strictly dominates the other three. It's even easier than polling. You don't have to write a loop, and you don't have to worry about like picking the right polling interval. You just put changes on the end. And it's way, way, way more scalable. And it's an order of magnitude more easier than either of the two complicated solutions I mentioned. Plus, it's probably more efficient even than the most complicated solution, because a lot of the work that the most complicated solution would do, RethinkDB is already doing anyway, and there's no reason to duplicate that effort. All right, so this is one query that we let you call changes on. In the upcoming 116 release, though, that's not the only thing. We let you call changes on all these classes of queries. We let you call, we let you subscribe to changes on individual points with get. We let you subscribe to changes on a range. We let you subscribe to changes on transformations of a table, including filters, maps. And we let you subscribe to changes on the first n elements of an ordered stream, including the special case of that min and max. And we let you subscribe to changes on combinations of these primitives, with a few very small exceptions. So I personally feel like that's really exciting because when I look at this long list of things, I don't just see a long list of features we've added. Each individual one of these, like this one right here that I just showed you, is a feature somebody somewhere wants to add to an app of theirs that they can just do without wasting a chunk of their life on it, banging their head against the wall, having to deal with all sorts of like concurrency bugs. They can just add that feature, and it's no pain, and they can get on and do something else with their life. All right, and, you know, so I sort of covered a lot of things there, and I went a, a little deep into the weeds on different architectures that are available and why change is better than all of them. But to come back to the main point for a second, there are these things called real-time apps that users really, really want. They're normally a huge pain to write, but change feeds in RethinkDB, and especially change feeds on queries, which we're adding in the release coming up in a few days, make them really, really easy, or easier. All right, any questions? You mentioned some admin things mm -hmm. that are coming to the new version of RethinkDB. Would you be able to show us anything that's really, you know, interesting? Yeah. So Mike asked me whether I could demonstrate uh, a couple of the admin things coming to RethinkDB because I mentioned them a little at the beginning, but then went mostly into change feeds after that. Uh, sure. So, basically, I mentioned before that in the new version of RethinkDB, you can do administration by uh, using the query language, as opposed to before you had to do it through the web UI. So the way that's implemented practically, uh, can you guys see this, or should I make it bigger? The way this is implemented is that there's a new database uh, which is sort of a pseudo database that has a bunch of tables in it which let you perform various admin activities. So, for example, one of the tables in this RethinkDB database is uh, table config. So, if I read from the table table config, I can see the configuration of my tables, and right now I only have one table in this database called test. And then let's say I wanted to programmatically change the durability of test. I can literally just write uh, update durability hard, like that. And I could tack a filter on if I had more than one table in my database. You'll see it replaced one row. And then if I run the original query again, the durability has changed to hard. Um, and one really, really cool thing is that uh, 
these system tables actually integrate with change feeds. So for example, um, there's a jobs table, which shows jobs that are currently running in the database. And you can call changes on this, to subscribe to changes on the jobs table. And you will get a little update every time a new job comes in. So here you can see a bunch of jobs are starting and stopping. And because there's no other load on the database, all of these jobs are actually related to the query displaying the jobs. But uh, any of the artificial tables, you can get change feeds on. You can get change feeds on queries on the artificial tables, like you know the last 1,000 issues or something, to use the example we just gave. And yeah, it's really, really cool. You should play around with it when the release comes out. Any other questions? <laughs>